when you were here before Couldn't look you in the eye Quand il me prend dans ses bras Il me parle tout bas Je vois le vie en croise You were only waiting for this moment to arrive Welcome back to the Creator Chronicles. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the 100 Day Project and how it changed my life. And I don't say that lightly. I wouldn't be where I am today without the 100 Day Project, but of course there's no way that I could have known that going into it six years ago back in 2015. So this has been on my mind lately because the 100 day project for 2021 is starting up again at the end of this month on January 31st. So I wanted to share a little bit about the 100 day project and specifically the 100 days of ukulele project because if you are even the least bit interested in this project, if the prospect of sharing ukulele videos for 100 days is a little bit scary and exciting to you, then uh, I'm going to tell you why you should do it. <laughs> this year we're making it just 100 days of ukulele and not 100 days of ukulele songs so that people don't feel pressured to post full songs. So this year I'm just suggesting that people record themselves practicing ukulele for five minutes and share like a 15 second video. Make it really low pressure, low stakes, if you want to post a full song, you're completely welcome to post a full song. It's your project. Whatever you want to do with it is exactly right for you. You can pick what you want to play and you can pick what you want to share. Join our different groups if you're interested and you might find some inspiration on how you might want to organize your project. But really, you can just take whatever inspiration hits you and just start. So... Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Uh, this is back in 2015 and at the time I was teaching ukulele but I was also a letterpress designer and printer essentially handcrafting beautiful invitations and even my own CD cases. That was definitely a big part of it. I liked making my own CD packaging. One of my letterpress friends posted on Instagram that she was going to take part in this 100 day project. And so I looked into it a little bit. I thought this sounds like an awesome way for me to work on my ukulele skills. Cause at the time I was transitioning from guitar to ukulele, but feeling like my ukulele wasn't um, at performance level. So I really needed the skills to make that jump, to, to feel like I could take my ukulele on stage and do with it what I could do with the guitar. So I decided to make it 100 days of ukulele songs. And I outlined for myself the things that I wanted to work on. I wanted to get better at shooting video of myself. I wanted to get better at recording my audio. And this is probably the most important thing. I wanted to just get comfortable with creating these videos and releasing them. Even though I had been a professional performer for so long, there's always this bit of self-consciousness about releasing a video. Oh, I could, I could do a better one. You know, you just, there's a lot of the self-judgment that just keeps you from letting go of that thing that you made. And, you know, one of the most important things I've learned from this project is that uh, in order to make more stuff, you actually have to let go of the stuff you made. Even if you don't think it was that great, you get comfortable with the concept of good enough. And usually when you look back on good enough, you'll either cringe 
or you'll say, hey, it wasn't that bad. In both cases, you'll survive. So that's a really important habit to learn from the 100 day project. So I jumped in and I started recording these videos, posting them on YouTube and on Facebook. And on day two, um, my Facebook video got a lot of attention, which was really encouraging. And then on day three, I played Creep. But I'm a creep. And that really tapped into something for me to share a truly dynamic performance with what I would consider pretty limited ukulele skills at the time. And for those of you who have learned to play creep from me, it, it's not that hard to play. Um, it really is about the arrangement and it is about you know, channeling all of that emo-ness. And it has gone on to become one of my most popular songs and even made it onto my record Ukulele Days, which is over here, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So there are things that you can only learn by trying, by actually physically doing, like learning how to find the right lighting in my apartment. You could see from the videos of the first 30 days of the project, that I was just trying different places in my house, different angles, ways of catching the light. You know, I was discovering that different times of day would cast different shadows. Those are things that you'll only learn by trying. And I was just using my laptop webcam. You know, nothing fancy. I had a MacBook Air at the time, and I just recorded it using QuickTime. So I ha already had a decent condenser mic and audio recording system. I discovered that I only wanted to use one microphone to capture the performance so that I could quickly turn around the video. It was too complicated to try to actually like produce the audio. So I experimented a lot with where I put the microphone where it could capture my voice in good balance with my ukulele. And I did have to hike up my ukulele a little bit and play it at a certain distance so that it would be close enough to the microphone. I've also been a live performer for, you know, all the years leading up to the project. And it is definitely a different kind of performance to put on headphones, to look into a video camera, and to still channel the same kind of emotion and delivery that you would in front of an audience. And that actually takes practice. I know for my 100 Day Squad, they're very familiar with this. You're going to do a lot of takes at first because you're just trying to get the chords right, get the lyrics right, that kind of thing. But then once you have the chords and lyrics down, it comes down to performance. Did that performance capture what you really feel? And it's a very exciting thing when it happens. I would say it's almost like an out of body experience. Like you've disappeared into this other world and then when you're done with the song, you kind of come out of it and like realize, oh, I think that was a good one. <laughs> or even if it wasn't a good one, I felt it. And that to me is, that's part of the process, you know, and that's, that's where I was trying to get to every day. And that's what made it worthy of a 100 day journey. I started with iMovie, you know, it's free on your Mac and is very functional. I played with the different filters. There were days when I thought, you know, I looked terrible, the lighting was terrible. I would just go in and try to mess with the filters to make it look passable. It was more of a discovery and almost like artistic painting process than it was 
necessarily like making it look better it's like oh what if i made it look really shadowy or what if i made it look really bright because it's here comes the sun the project was a bit of a forcing function to learn the software i definitely get frustrated with learning new software new gear in the beginning you know there's like a steep learning curve you got to get yourself over it and something like this something that requires you to dig in and explore it will really help you to understand the capabilities of the software and open up your mind to these different artistic possibilities. So that's the kind of thing that just gets me excited about these kinds of projects. You are dedicating your time to finding out how you can create, you know? It's like an artist learning their palette. One interesting way that my style developed, I guess, my video style developed, was, um, you know, I started wearing the flower every day and making it prominent and even this like finding the headphone position where I could have one headphone on and then this flower of in front of the other headphone that's something I discovered through the 100 day project a lot of my fans have noticed this I tend to wear a black tank top in a lot of those videos from that time because if you're going to record every day you don't want to think about what you're going to wear you know, it was just like a very Steve Jobs kind of thing for me too. I just had a lot of black tank tops. And so I would just put on a black tank top. That was my recording wear. It was easy, would go with any color flower. And I think because my hair is black, it just like made it easier to color grade. I experimented with makeup looks because when you're looking at these videos all the time, you're like, why not? Why not try some weird eyeshadow? Why not try my fake eyelashes or whatever? It becomes a playground for you, which I think is a good way to think of it. It becomes a lot less scary. It's your comfort zone. It's not unfamiliar anymore. You have fully explored your play space. I started the whole project by choosing songs in alphabetical order. So day one was a song starting with A, day two was a song starting with B, and after I finished that first set of of 26 songs, then I moved on to alphabetical order through Beatles songs. You know, learning Beatles songs that's like learning songwriting from the gods. To break down those Beatles arrangements and then rearrange them for myself on ukulele, it was a masterclass in songwriting and songcraft, learning some of the world's most beloved songs. So all of that really set up my YouTube channel to be seen, to be found by people all over the world. So speaking of that, I don't even really know what my following looked like at that time. I started up my Patreon because of this 100 day project. People wanted to support the project and I thought, okay, well, I was already kind of interested in Patreon. Why don't I start a Patreon and people can use the Patreon to support more videos and then uh, it turned into that group of people, my Patreon community, wanting to learn how to play the songs that I shared in my 100 Days project. And so that's how, you know, my YouTube channel grew even more by me sharing the tutorials that the patrons requested. So it all built up from this original 100 Day project. So then in 2017, some of the patrons were asking for audio recordings of my songs and I thought okay I can take songs from the 100 day project and put them onto an album why not I picked the songs that sounded the best and then asked my patrons for some feedback asked my top fans asked my trusted musical friends which songs to include and prepared this album ukulele days oh it's over here let me grab it So the funny thing about this, uh, this was July 2017 that I released the record that like my expectations for this album were so low. 
<laughs> Meaning, I only wanted to release this as a digital release, and I only told people about it like two weeks before it was released. And because it was a project that I recorded in 2015, just with these single mic performances and then released on YouTube, I, I didn't think it was that big a deal. Then when I told my patrons about it and told my YouTube fan base that uh, it, the album was available for pre-order just on my own site, all of these pre-orders started coming in, you know, hundreds, to the point where I was like, wow, I think this album might actually hit the charts. And so I started doing some research and yeah, it looked like there was a really good chance that this album, this little album of simple recordings, just ukulele and voice from the 100 Days of Ukulele Songs project was going to hit the Billboard charts. So I released the album on uh, July 28th, I believe. And that, you know, the following week was my birthday. And that week, I found out that this album, Ukulele Days, hit both the Billboard jazz charts and the world charts. This was definitely a moment that I was like, wow, my community really came out to support me. It was very humbling. It was something that I never could have imagined, right? that I would start with this whim of an idea like, oh, I'll join the 100 Day Project. Why don't I do a 100 Days of Ukulele Songs project? And it could turn into something that could get me on the billboard charts. So for that, you know, to my patrons, to my fans, I'm just so utterly grateful. Thank you, especially if you pre-ordered this album back in 2017. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> So at the time, we just released it as digital. Um, and then the following year, we came out with the vinyl. Look at how beautiful it is. OK, so if you have a record player and uh, want to pick up this vinyl, go to CynthiaLynn.com. <laughs> so now here comes the most amazing part. So I did the project myself in 2015. But then after I released Ukulele Days, uh, the following year, 2018, I had this inkling to start up the project again. And then I invited my Patreon community to join me. So that year, a core group of patrons, maybe about 30 or so, started posting for the 100 Days of Ukulele Songs project. Jenny Selig of New York, New York, she had put together a Facebook event page where everyone posted. And it was so cool to be able to get to know my patrons by seeing their videos every day and also just to see their growth, growth of their skills, their confidence, to see them becoming friends through this daily connection and this bond of taking on this crazy challenge. <laughs> so that 100 day group, they, they are the OG group, the saga group. <laughs> A number of those folks completed 100 days out of 100 days. And so n the next year when the 100 day project came around again, I invited those people again. Some people joined in to complete 200 out of 200 days. So in 2019, more people participated across Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And I shared a, a little showcase video on my page at the end of that year. And then when the 2020 project came around, everybody was home because of COVID. We had so many people participate in the project that at the end of our 2020 project, we shared a community showcase video featuring 70 people from the project out of hundreds who participated across the world. A lot of people turn to the 100 Days of Ukulele Project as a focus, and you could really see the community coming to support and encourage each other. We were all on this journey together. It really speaks to the old adage that if you want to go far, go together. You know, that if you by yourself have to do 100 days, it feels like, it feels like you might give up at any time. But when I first started, I knew I was part of a bigger project, the 100 Day Project. And now, 
for the 100 Days of Ukulele Songs project. There's such a strong community of people who are there to keep each other going, to lift each other up, and to encourage each other's creativity and confidence. It is just such a beautiful thing to see. I am just so proud of this community and of everyone who's even posted one day for the 100 Days Project. It's a commitment to your own creative empowerment, and that's what I'm all about. (laughs) Don't let the pressure of 100 Days keep you from starting. I personally have never finished the 100 day project. The first year I stopped at 63 songs. I think in 2018, I only got to 30 something songs. Well, maybe it's just me. I'm not very strict with myself, (laughs) but I'm going to keep doing it as long as it makes me feel like I'm growing in some way. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the 100 days of ukulele project. If you're interested in it and need some encouragement, you can comment. And if you are definitely going to join us, definitely leave a comment. So thank you all so much. I can't wait to see what everyone does for the project this year. I know it's going to be amazing. All right, everyone. Take care.